Well, I thought it would be fun to answer some of your questions, and these are questions I've received recently, most of them relating to aquatic plants. I always wanted to do this, so uh, why not today? Well, welcome to the Small Scape. This, uh, this video is happening specifically because of, well, if you were in the live stream, if you dropped by this last Saturday after Thanksgiving, um, if you know, you know, you were there. And our live stream kind of uh, bombed out after about 15 or 20 minutes. We could not get our internet back up again. It was horrible. It was like getting to Wally World and they're closed or I was just kind of like, all I could do was send out a message like, sorry. And Mr. Prime tried, Mr. P Mr. Prime Time tried everything. And as soon as he would get it back up again, it would conk out, I don't know. With the, all that being said, I thought it would be fun to pick some questions that I've seen uh, recently. And I would kind of like to do this every once in a while. Let me know your thoughts if, if you'd like this too. Because if, I, I don't know if you found this, but if you have a question, frequently other people have the same question. So uh, sh you know, share it with the class and all. The first question that I'm going to pull has to do with something that I call my bad. And um, this was from Amy, and she had just remarked, and there's gonna be a couple of a couple of questions or comments that I pull that just have something to do with something that I wanna mention. This one is one of them. And she says, I love my new mug and adore the stuck on you shirt. Well, those were two items that she had ordered. This is the, the Anubius stuck on you, because you know, Anubius rock, get it. But the mug that she's referring to, I, my bad. I um I frequently have conversations in my own head that I don't share, and this was one of them. I came up with a mug. It was a fall-inspired pumpkin shrimp mug, and I shared it with the prime time people over on the live stream. And since we hadn't done a live stream in forever on the small scape, I just never had a chance to show it. I didn't even do a community post, and I was thinking about this like, oh my gosh, I didn't tell people, so I didn't want you to think that I was just you know like hiding it. Not that I would. It is still for sale on the Primetime um, Aquatics website. If you're like me, you've moved on from fall and you're into winter and you probably wouldn't use um, a fall mug, that's totally fine. I'm just gonna leave it up there for anybody who's looking for gift ideas because there's always winter, winter stuff coming down the pipeline. So I just wanted to mention that. Now off to some questions. I've got my phone here, so what do we got here? Um, <laughs> this was from Suzanne and this was the live stream. Uh, so bummed the show buffered out. Take a number, me too. My question about the RO water was pertaining to plants. I could not find that question, but she says that I'm in St. Paul, Minnesota, and uh, she also has hard water. I don't use CO2. What plants would do best? I also, I don't use CO2, and we do have hard water. So the, the ones that do well for me that I can speak to would be uh, Anubius, Buse, um, both of those do quite well. Anubius does really well. All different kinds of varieties. I've had multiple varieties of Buse. Uh, Velocinaria, if you want something a little taller, if you have like say a 20 gallon, that's usually the biggest that I go specifically for my aquascapes. Uh, I like that and I'll even use it in smaller tanks if I don't mind doing some maintenance, but even the corkscrew veil is an amazing plant, looks really cool. Um, Crips, all kinds of crips I've had and kept, and they do just great. Our our friend, my friend, maybe not your friend, hornwort, if you're looking to kind of use up some of those extra nutrients, hornwort is great. It just kind of floats at the top of the tank. It can kind of help use up some of those nutrients. So if you're dealing with any kind of algae, uh, I like to use that. Or if you have too much light in your aquarium and you can't dial it back and you have low light plants, that can also help along with some floating plants, but I, I do kind of like hornwort. And then any of the uh, java ferns, try it, you know, all you can do is try it. And any kind of mosses, java moss, uh, moss balls, that's a, kind of a different kind of plant, but those, those do well. And um, yeah, that should get you started on some wa uh, pl aquatic water, on some aquarium plants that do pretty good in hard water. All right, and this one, I wanted to remind people this does come up every so often and I do forget to mention it and I forget it 
my own self when I'm out shopping. If you happen to go to the Petco or the PetSmarts, this is from uh, Lemon, Lyman. I'm sure I'm pronouncing the name wrong, if so I, I do apologize. But mentioning that online price is lower than the in-store price. They honor the online price if you do walk in there. And um, that's actually true for all the products they sell. I did that once for a dog cage. I remembered that and the online price was lower. Um, but that's how you can get your aquatic plants for cheaper. This one um, got the Anubius Gigantica, Gigantia for $6.49 versus the in-store price of $10.99. So you can save buku bucks just looking at the online price and they will honor it if you show them and say this is the online price. And this one from Finnegan Fish, I found an Anubius Dragon Claw Tissue Culture at my local fish store. I bought it and it's still in the cup three weeks later. I just had to have it. Yeah, I do tend to leave my aquatic plants in the, in the cup for a little bit too long. I forget about them or just say, oh, I'll get to that and then forget about that. But I'm bringing this one up because I said, I'm sorry, Dragon Claw, what is that? And I looked it up. And that is definitely a plant that I need to have in my Anubius collection. Love it. It's got very kind of, as you would guess, dragon claw, kind of more slender pointed leaves. Looks really cool. Stays pretty small from what I recall when I, when I looked it up, maybe like three inches or so. So it is a smaller Anubius, if I recall correctly. But I, I just wanted to pass that along to you. If you've ever seen it or heard of it, I definitely put it on your list and keep an eye out for it. And this one I'm including because it's a good reminder, especially if you are new to the aquarium hobby or the aquatic plant hobby, then definitely keep this one in mind. This is from um, user MG says, I am new to this stuff. Now I know why my Anubias died. I planted them in the substrates. There we go. I'm sure we've all done that when we first be, began starting in these hobbies and you, you're not quite sure which one of these, or maybe you don't even know yet that some aquatic plants you plant into the substrate, others you do not. Now for something like, and that's what they're called when you do not bury, um, when you do not put them in the substrate, it's called an epiphyte and that means you can attach them above the substrate so they don't the roots do not have to go into the substrate they're water feeders so you can attach them to driftwood or rocks and their roots can when you when you look at an epiphyte such as anubius or buse um bulbitis is another one anything with a rhizome that rhizome part that thicker kind of part where the leaves are coming off of though that part has to stay above the substrate the roots themselves can go into the substrate and you can they, they will eventually grow into the substrate that's pretty much what they'll do but just keep in mind that that uh, rhizome needs to stay above the substrate otherwise it will eventually rot it won't do very well and uh, it will die this is an, an another um, Anubius question and also something that comes up very frequently I included this this is from your male main and this um, they said bought four tissue cultures of the white Anubias and they struggled big time. I've heard that CO2 is needed for them to uh, thrive. Now, um, that was when I got the Anubias, it's called different things, variegated. Um, there's also like a snow white, but any kind of plant that is um, like white, to keep that white color, you're gonna have to have higher light. So Anubias is generally a low light plant. So you're gonna to have to have at least medium light, maybe even higher. The problem that you run into with that is you're, you may be kind of bringing in the possibility of uh, algae. And so if you are going to be jacking up the light a little bit with Anubias, which is a slower grower, you will probably want to include some fast growing plants to kind of use up those extra nutrients. Um, I, I would highly recommend that or um, when you get an, uh, like I had gotten the Anubias variegated knowing that I won't keep the, the parameters correct to maintain that lighter color. Uh, I just don't have the, um, I just didn't need to. I just got it because of an Anubias and it for, for a while it, it does look kind of cool. Um, but I don't plan on maintaining that. You can 
try uh, another Anubias. If you do the if you like the white on there, it will stay, and it stayed for for many months um, for me. And that is Stardust. I have the Anubias Giant Stardust, and it still has the white kind of veining in there. Looks really really cool. But to answer your question, as far as I know, the CO2 won't really help with um, getting that white color to stay. It may, but generally speaking, the CO2 is gonna just give you better growth. And this is a good comment from uh, Walter. And he said that every time I buy them at Petco, they melt, pl aquatic plants, I buy them at Petco, they melt and don't come back. Just recently got a Rotala, it melted in one day. I don't run CO2, I think that's necessary for tissue cultures. Um, again, this is the CO2 question, and I don't run CO2. I have had Rotala, and I have gotten Rotala from the tissue culture section from uh, Petco or PetSmart, one of the two. And it did find it didn't grow very fast. It didn't grow very um, robust. Uh, it, it just, it, gro it grows much slower without the CO2. Quite possibly it won't get those, um, those deeper red colors if that's the type that you have. Um, what I would recommend though, if you are not going with a higher light or a CO2, stay away from the tissue cultures that are marked intermediate. Stay with the ones that are marked easy. And the easy, generally speaking, is for lower tech tanks. That would be like a low to maybe a medium light. Um, if you don't want to mess with that, just be like me and just stay away from the intermediate plants. As to why the Rotala melted in one day, I'm not quite sure. The plant could have been struggling, possibly, already in the cup and maybe you just didn't know it. Um, Rotalas I don't have a whole lot of experience with. If there's something specific that, uh, say like Valis area doesn't like to be planted too deep, that sort of thing. Um, so I don't know if there's any specifics to it, but uh, other than that, it could have maybe just not liked your water. Um, yeah, not, not quite sure, but generally speaking, I don't think Rotala requires CO2, in, in, at least in order to survive. All right, and this comment or uh, question is from Sequoia Elizabeth, and she says, um, tell me, is the shed really worth a visit? I live near Denver and was thinking about taking the train to visit Chicago. Well, let me tell you, this is a funny story. Uh, back earlier in this year, uh, Mr. Primetime and me, we decided, you know what, let's go to the, let's go downtown. And now neither of us are really, we're not downtown people. We don't really generally like to drive downtown, go downtown, usually around the holidays, that might be kind of fun. But uh, generally speaking, we're just not downtown people. So we did make the trip downtown and uh, it was very cold. Of course, you have to find parking. So there's, there's cost to driving and parking and we finally did it was freezing of course do you bring your coat in do you leave it there <laughs> do you run in i think that's what we did and we get to the door and found out the hard way that you really had you had to buy the tickets online because they sell out so um we did not get to go to the shed i haven't been there in many years what i recall uh it's, it's a famous aquarium for many reasons. It is a very cool aquarium. I think you would love it. The last time I did see it, I do remember um, absolutely loving it. People I've talked to recently have been there more recent than I have, love it. So I, I think it would be great if you combined it with other like downtown Chicago sorts of sites. I think that would be really cool, especially maybe around the holidays if you're thinking about doing that. There's Michigan Avenue. Uh, I call it Marshall Fields. It's Macy's course now but um chris kindle market i mean there's so many so many other things you could do there but i just thought i'd mention that that you know yeah shed would would be pretty cool all right and this is another question that i i like that that i and a lot of these questions that i pull we get uh, a lot of of these questions frequently so these are repeat questions that i think everybody can learn from and this one from uh west i never ever glue anything down because i make a mess yeah, and because I like to rearrange my tanks. Now, this is uh, brings up a really good point because the epiphytes that I was talking about, Anubias and Buus and Bulbitis and other one, Java Fern, those, uh, those you attach. And it, the easiest way you can do is using super glue. Yes, 
super glue or a cyanoacrylate, any kind of brand that you get. I suggest the gel because it's just going to be thicker and it's going to be easier to work with and won't be as runny. You can use that. It is aquarium safe. It is fish safe, believe it or not. Yes, it dries. No, the fish don't eat it. And it can be a real time saver, especially if you're gluing multiple ones, if you don't want them to dislodge and move around the tank. Yes, I've had many, many hacks that I've done, videos, maybe I'll, I'll link up there, down there somewhere for you. If you are new to aquatic plants or attaching aquatic plants, there's other way, a whole bunch of other different ways. You can use string, you can use, um, I like to use a lot of hair items, plastic hair items that are meant for hair, or um, just depending on the size of the Anubius or the Buse or whatever plant you're working with. So many different options or you can do what I do frequently, and that's the wedge method. You don't even have to glue it or attach it. Find a piece of driftwood or two rocks that are very close together or maybe have little nooks and crannies, and you can just kind of wedge the rhizome in there, and it does just fine. And then, just like uh, like West here, then you can, you can move it all you want. You don't even have to be satisfied with your aquascape. It can just, you can just play around with it, constantly move it. Anubius is such a great plant. I think it's probably a little bit less um, uh, angry if you move it than like buse. Buse can be kind of, um, especially this little smaller pieces, can be a little bit more, you have to be a little bit more gentle with it. But Anubius can be great. It won't mind at all if you're moving it all around the tank. Absolutely no problem at all. All right, and a couple more here that I that just spoke to spoke to something inside me here. I just had to mention them. This is from Carol and she says, LOL danger, multi nano tank syndrome. Now you've heard of MTS, right? Multi tank syndrome. That's what happens when you get into the hobby. You have one tank and then pretty soon you look and you have five tanks or 10 tanks or whatever. We won't mention, we won't mention how many tanks everybody has, but I think that this brings up a really good point. Multi nano tank syndrome. You better watch out for it, especially with the holidays coming up, sales. They're going to have Christmas sales at the pet stores. They're going to have New Year sales. And just one more tank, especially when these are small and you're talking a nano tank, you could have something that doesn't have all water in it. It could be something meant for like a paludarium. It could be a large bowl. I mean, I think you can get into much bigger trouble with nano tanks. And I'm just here to say, if you enjoy the amount of tanks that you have, good for you. But be very careful because more tanks can pop up faster than you can set them up or have space for them or have time to maintain them. Just just keep it in mind um, just that every tank that you buy will come with some maintenance and will require some time. So just if you want to hear that, that's fine. If you don't, just ignore me. And this last one is from uh, Drew Zero. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they say, I've been hoarding spare equipment for a tank size I don't have. That speaks to the inner hoarder to me, or otherwise known as a collector. I've been a collector my whole life with pretty much anything I like. It's all or nothing. Uh, and keep that also in mind when you're in those stores and or even thrifting. I love to thrift. And you are acquiring things that maybe you want to set up you don't yet have. I do that with craft items. Something that I was like, oh, I love that. I need to make that. And then I buy all the materials, yet I don't start making it until I've amassed way too much. It's just a little thing I'd like to throw out. I don't know if you're the same way. Let me know if any of these resonate with you. But I, I do think this is kind of helpful to share very common questions or thoughts that a lot of people have and then see if everybody else uh, has the same thoughts or questions. So hopefully you found this video helpful and I hope you're having a great week. See you next time.